Welcome to lecture C on elasticities and, and now we're going to see with these percent changes we've been using in the elasticity formula where do they come from exactly how, how do we calculate them if we wanted to and so I want to make sure that you understand that when we calculate these percentage changes for elasticities we don't do it the normal way why not well let's see what the normal way is. Most people when they're in school they uh, learn a formula for a percentage change something like this. Um, take the uh, last number minus the first number uh, and then divide it by the first number and then multiply whatever you get times 100 and that gives you the percentage change. So using that normal method uh, suppose a number started at 50 and increased to 100. What percentage change? Well, since percent means per 100, you can see that the normal way this should be a 100% increase because it takes this number and doubles it. So it's a 100% increase. But using the formula, it would be 100 minus 50. The divided by the original number, 50, and then that gives you 50 over 50 equals 1 times 100 would be a 100% increase. Now, why don't we do it this way? Well, the reason is, what if we went the opposite way? What if we went down from 100 back to 50? What would happen? Well, if going from 50 to 100 is a 100% increase, 100 back to 50 should be the same size, shouldn't it? Well, of course you can do this in your head since percent means per 100. Well, if you go from 100 per 100 down to 50, then you've lost 50 per 100, 50%. Now, again, just using the formula, this would be, uh, we're starting at uh, we're going to fi from 50 is the last number um, minus the first number divided by the first number and then times 100 well the divided by 100 and, and multiplied by 100 will cancel there and you get minus 50 percent now remember that since the point of calculating an elasticity is to gauge how cause and effect are related to each other, how large is the cause compared to how large is the effect. Well, to economists it makes sense that if we're measuring the size of a cause, say a change in price, and the price goes from $50 to $100, that size of a cause, if that's 100%, then when you go back from 100 to 50, it should be precisely the same size cause because it's the same change. 50 to 100, 100 back to 50, this, the change is the same magnitude, the same thing should happen. And so the percent change should be measured the same way, not 100 sometimes and 50 the other way. Uh, so instead of doing it this way, we use what's called the midpoint formula for percentage changes. And the midpoint formula in some ways is much simpler to calculate. And the formula for a percent change in anything, you'll just call it A, the percent change in A equals uh, delta change in A, so how much did A change? Divide it by the average A between the two numbers, so what's the average of the two? and multiply that times 100. So using the same numbers uh, as before, if we go from 50 to 100, then what is the change in this number? Well, from 50 to 100, it, the change is 50. And since it's up 50, we'd call that a positive 50. We're going to divide that by the average of those two numbers. So what's the average of 50 and 100? 50 plus 100 is 150 divided by 2, 75. So 
50 on the top. The change is up, 100, up 50. Divide by the average, 75, and then multiply that times 100. Now 50 divided by 75 is 0 0.6666666 times 100 equals 66.6666667% change. Now what if we went backwards from 100 to 50? Well, what's the change from 100 to 50? Well, it's down 50, so we call that minus 50. Divided by the average of 150 is 75. Multiply that times 100, and you get exactly the same thing, but now it's a negative 66.67% change. And this is why we prefer the midpoint formula. Again, if you're going from 50 to 100, that should be the same magnitude or percentage change in our mind, the same cause, same kind of uh, cause in a situation as going from 100 back down to 50. You should see the same kind of effect either way. So when people go from, say the price goes from 50 to 100, the effect should be of the same kind of magnitude as when you go from 100 back down to 50. Now, the big difference is the number we're dividing by is the same here. It's both 75 instead of the old way. Sometimes you divide by the 50, sometimes you divide by the 100. So this is called the midpoint formula because we divide by the number that's in the middle between the 100 and the 50 when we do a percentage change. And so it doesn't matter if it's a percent change in quantity or a percent change in price, percent change in income, or percent change in anything you can imagine. It's the change divided by the average times 100. So let's calculate an elasticity here. So here's the uh, price elasticity of demand. Sometimes people use this symbol for it, epsilon with a D. Percent change in quantity divided by the percent change in price. So we're going to have to calculate 2% changes here percent change in quantity on the top, which is the change in quantity divided by the average times 100, and same thing with the percent change in price. Change in price divided by average times 100. And so um, a lot of times people will just cancel the hundreds here, since you're multiplying the top and the bottom by 100, and they just simplify it down to change in quantity over average quantity divided by change in price over average price, and that's fine. But let's calculate these. Uh, and then see what the elasticity would be. So let's do percent change in quantity first. Now that's going to be the change in quantity. So here we're going from a price of 10 to a price of 15. At the same time we see the quantity go from 100 to 80. So to calculate the percent change in quantity, ask yourself, what happens to quantity from 100 to 80? What's the change in quantity? It's down 20. So that's the change in quantity on the top here. Divide it by the average quantity. Well, we go from 100 to 80. What's the average of 180, the midpoint? Well, that's 90. Okay, take 20, divide it by 90, negative 20. Multiply the result by 100, and let's see what you get. You get 22.22222%. So 22.2% change in quantity. Now let's uh, calculate the change in percent change in price. The price was 10, it goes up to 15. What's the change in price from 10 to 15? It goes up 5, so that's a positive 5. Divide it by the average price between 10 and 15. If it's not obvious, add them up, 10 plus 15, is 25 divided by 2 is $12.50. Divide 5 by 12.5, multiply it the result times 100, and what do you get? Well, you get 40%. 40% change in price. Now, I'm always losing minus signs. Do as I say and not as I do. So uh, I dropped the minus sign here from the 22% change in quantity. Be very careful when you're doing this because a lot of times it really matters whether the result is positive or negative. But in this case, uh, to get the elasticity, 
we take the 22%, negative 22% change in quantity, divide it by the 40% change in price. Now you can already see that since the change in quantity is smaller, 22, than the change in price, 40, this is going to be an inelastic elasticity. It'll be less than 1. But if we divide the 22.2 negative, divided by 40% change in price, we get an elasticity, price elasticity of demand equals negative 0 0.5555555. Or we can call that 5.6 if we round it off properly. And that's an inelastic demand. Uh, and we'd say that for each 1% change in price, we'll have a, a 0.56 decrease in quantity.